<laughs> Why should the police come? Nobody's called them. You mean? That's right. Now, I suggest that we stack the bodies in the cellar, lock it, leave quietly one at a time, and pretend that none of this has ever happened. Great idea. I'll leave first, if you don't mind. Oh, be my guest. In fact, I think we all owe you a vote of thanks. For she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. For she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly... I told you I didn't do it. But what if the authorities find out what happened? The FBI will take care of that. You mean my phone call from Mr. Hoover? I work with. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Clue the Movie Podcast, where we break down the 1985 cult class movie Clue. Talk about minute 87 of Clue the Movie. I'm the boat Brad Gilmore, joined by the General Jeff Smith. Jeff, how are we? I am great. I am excited to look at this minute. <laughs> so, um, again, you want to tell them? Yes, we have to. <laughs> we have to yes. uh, reveal the. What is it? Break the fourth wall. Reveal behind the curtain, if you will. It happened again, everybody. We've done this before. It's happened before, and I'll explain it once again. The yeah. minute when I when I got the movie from Jeff when we first started this show back in was it twenty two twenty twenty two. Um, 1988. When we got this minute, I got the, the, the movie and file. the file and I put it in a program, which I don't even remember the name of to cut it automatically. I figured out how big each file would be by the megabyte. And I had it cut it by the megabyte, which is crazy. But when it did yeah. that, it named it clue zero, starting with minute one. And then clue yeah. one is minute two and so on and so forth. You would think this is pretty simple to understand, but now Just add one. Yeah. Now or subtract one. See, there you add go. It. See, it's very Y2K. It's very Y2K. So every so often we start watching a minute and we go, oh, that was great. Let's go. Let's record another one. And then we go, oh, wait a minute. That minute wasn't the right minute. <laughs> so Did we watch the, the minute before the minute? And then we couldn't remember if we got the minute. Then we watched that minute. We go, oh, no, we didn't watch the minute before this minute. So now we got to go watch that minute and talk about it after we watch the minute that succeeds it. So luckily, we have caught ourselves every time. Unfortunately, we catch ourselves after it's done. So today, we've already recorded, right before this, the minute that will follow this minute. So yes. if you listen to this podcast in order, which you should, you're going to, first of all, you're going to hear us reference the minute number incorrectly we will be calling that 87 yes this what we're doing now is 87 yes and then we'll at the very end we'll be going and now we're going to 88 we'll see you next time for 88 no jackasses you just did 88 so <laughs> we jumped ahead a minute we skipped over that minute to instantly arrive at this minute on this minute so but our um, watches are off our I don't know. Einstein has my watch. You a little, little bit behind. So we recorded the episode of the minute that's going to follow this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. But here we are with Mrs. Peacock's big reveal and a wonderful singing from most of the cast. But this is one of the first times I noticed that Christopher Lloyd not participating in For She's a Jolly Good Fellow. He is not. And it's he doesn't interesting. Want to sing. There, there's a couple things I noticed when we watched this one. Now, interestingly enough, this minute, 87, isn't as action packed as the last 87 that we <laughs> reviewed, which is next week's minute. Yeah. For next those, week, enjoy minute 87. It's an even better 87. It's a better version of 87 than this 87. Yeah. Um, this is a this setup. Is good 87. This is a setup to 88, obviously. Um, not as much happens in here, although at the very tail end, we realize Wadsworth works for the FBI. And yeah. are we to believe that 
he's this is a setup for Peacock. He's he's tricking her. He's saying, "Oh, why should the police come? No one's called them. Let's stack the bodies yeah. in the cellar." Wink, wink. Yeah, leave I'm one on at a time. Side. You've done us a service. No, and she buys it. Yeah, yeah. Which is that makes yeah. sense you've, that you've she buys great. it? I hate those. I hate those people too. I'm with you. Um, I think she just wants to get out of there. Yeah. So it's almost a really like when when he says nobody's called the police. She goes, "You mean like ah, we're in cahoots." And he gives a good. I mean, I think it also because it's Tim Curry and he can make anything sound sinister. So when he says, that's right, with a smile, you're like, yeah, he knows. This guy, he's on my side. Yeah. But I'll leave first, just to be sure. But this is, uh, Eileen Brennan is fantastic in this, because we've seen her play very, very ditzy throughout the entire movie. And the second that she is revealed to be the bad guy, her transformation is pretty impressive. She, um, yeah, she's she... not messing with her hat. She's not messing with her glasses. She's not, you know, crying or screaming. She's just great idea. I'm gonna go out and smoke. <laughs> she Sounds does like Roz from uh, Monsters Inc. Yeah, she... I'm Wazowski. She does do a little physical transformation of her voice. Now, also, um, we've talked about Eileen Brennan's voice before, and I wish there were actually more people who still spoke in that tone, that accent, where it's almost uh, British, but it's American. Yeah. It's New English. <laughs> would, you, would that, would that be? I think it's very theater. Uh, Clue is such, I mean, it makes sense that it's it's adapted to the stage so much because it's very theatrical. The performances are pretty big. Um, so, yeah, it makes sense that she kind of has that faux like it's not necessarily an accent that exists in life. Uh, Cary Grant's accent. It's a, it's a enjoy myself. I can't even do it. Tim and Tim and Tim myself. Yes. It's like a little English. Very treated. Not... Oh my, the soup's delicious. I sound like a Body Python character. You but do. That's that's. Uh... Hey, hey. Um, you might yeah. know this. Um, speaking mm. of like the era and shows of the day, and although this you know came out. Uh, in the, I think, 80s. Dynasty? Was Dynasty a show in the 80s? That's the right? 80s, yeah. Uh, I didn't know if it was late 70s or 80s. Um, Dynasty, tell me, and maybe I, did I hear this in your doc, or where did I hear this? Is they used the set from Clue in Dynasty, right? For the hotel? They used it, uh, it's Dynasty, I think, yeah, for a hotel. Yeah, it was, and it looks pretty much exactly the same. It's just the that, uh, that hallway is now the lobby. Yeah, the hotel. I've never, I've seen. I did not watch Dynasty, but I've seen pictures of it, and it's jarring to see a bunch of just. It's jarring to see a bunch of people just lounging around in the in the clue house. You're like, don't you know? There's murder here. There's some murders here. Was that in your doc? Where did I hear that? Uh, it's not actually in the doc, but it's it's. it's Maybe you told me before. I think I heard it from you. it could have been on this very podcast. Um, could have been. We have done 88 episodes. Technically. So it's hard to keep track. 87, Te- really. Technically. but Actually, yeah. more than that, because we've had some specials, special guest interviews. Yeah, we have. That's Oh, that's true. So I don't know. We're, we're in the 90s, I think. We're in the 90s. As far as... Welcome the whole- to the 90s, Mr. Bonks. Um, the singing of for She's a Jolly Good Fellow. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Did you did you like this bit? Yeah, I I think this is a, a very fun. I love. Well, Madeline Kahn decides that her character needs to like harmonize and do a a high part. So it's not even just they're singing to to uh, get her to get out the door. They like she puts on a performance, and actually, Mister Green entertaining in the background too. He's kind of like moving his arm, like he's kind of getting into it. Colonel Mustard looks at them like, I don't know what we're doing, which is perfect. And then, yeah, I, I uh, Professor Plum just, he has kind of his hand up on his lapel and he's just staring, make it, making eye contact with her the whole time and doesn't do anything. Well, Scarlet I, sings because Scarlet's a performer, so it makes sense. Scarlet was hitting those notes. You could hear yeah. Leslie and Warren going like, hey, yeah. 
I can sing, and y'all about to hear it. <laughs> like, I got this. Like, like I've been waiting for a reason to sing tonight. And you know, boom! I'm about to give you these notes, and I think that that's. Yeah. I think that was the real. I was, well, that made a great question for Leslie Ann Warren. I think that that's the real Leslie Ann Warren going. This is a singing moment. I'm busting right. out the pipes. All right, y'all about and to hear it. I would. It doesn't sound for a movie that has a lot of ADR in it and uh, dialogue replacement. It sounds like it's live. I think that is live. I don't think it's. I don't think it's recorded. So that being said, it's pretty impressive because everybody sounds really good but it makes sense with this cast you've got tim curry who can definitely sing got leslie award can definitely sing got madeline Kahn who's hitting the high notes you've got the lead singer of spinal tap in the back um christopher lloyd famously does not sing uh he did not even do the singing for his character in anastasia so he's not a singing guy Uh, he's like this is not what i do i don't sing. sing I love too that uh, Mrs. White. It sounds like it's Mrs. White. She's hitting the ad libs, right? Where somebody's doing oh, for well, she's he's doing a good oh. fan. She's yeah. like hitting, but she's out, like in between. But she's going, yeah. She's hitting like the uh, the uh, what do you call them? The off not off notes, but uh, I'd say the ad lib. That's what a, I would say. That's what that's I would fine. call it. Because she's at yeah. She's doing a. He's like, uh, nobody can, nobody can, nobody can to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, like, doing, yeah. she's doing like the. She's like, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She's kind of doing a Mariah Carey singing the national anthem kind of thing. Like she's, she's doing her own little, yeah, riffing. The end. She's riffing. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Um, and also, also in the original script, and I'm wondering if this is the maybe the UK version of the song, because mm-hmm. I've always heard. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow that no one can deny, or what, or that nobody can deny, right. right? Which nobody can deny, yeah. Which nobody can deny. In the script, it says, Wadsworth starts singing, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. And slowly, the others join in, for she's a jolly good fellow, and so say all of us, and so say oh. all of us, and so say all of us. But she's a hmm. jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. I remember maybe that's the British so version. Say all of us. Uh, I believe this song has multiple verses, so maybe that's from a different one. I know you need to look up the lyrics to yeah. He's a Jolly Good Fellow, Brad Gilmore. Let's see. This is one of those weird ones where everybody knows the first part, and then they, they learn later that it's like a 20-minute song that has a thousand different versions, and it'll be like... A, it's something weird, like, and oh. we're going to eat some pudding. And you're like, no, I no, didn't know no. Part of it. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. As with many songs, they use gender specific pronouns that can be altered to match the gender of the intended recipient. Okay. Because they say a she's they a do. jolly good fellow instead of right. he's a jolly good fellow. I don't know if they say because lady. Mrs. Peacock is not a man. Yeah. Uh, but here we go. The American version says for. He's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. The British version, I was right, for he's a jolly good fellow, for mm-hmm. he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good sell- fellow, and so say all of us. That's the British okay. version. So there you go. Do you think that maybe Mr. Green's confusion on Mrs. Peacock's gender stems at the beginning from this, she's a jolly good fellow? It could be the fellow. I say... No, I have. I don't think it has anything to do with it. But because we find not? out we in the next minute, this. he's like, "Mrs. Yeah. Peacock's a man." What? And yeah. Maybe he's. We a, do find out in the next minute. It's as if we talked about him already. He's confused that. Yeah, it's yeah. This is not Mr. Green's shining moment. Like he, first of all, he's got to go throw up because of the thought of monkey's brains, and then he's just kind of long for the ride. And then he sings the song with gusto, but he doesn't even know why. And then, yeah, in the next minute, he's going to have this little, his very famous line. And this is the ending. I might say it again next week, too. This is the ending where I do not believe that uh, Mr. Green is an FBI agent. I just think he's silly man. Silly man. Um, now, at the end here, we do get a reveal that will lead into the next minute. Oh, it's Wadsworth being an FBI agent. And a cool saying, FBI agent. Cool FBI agent saying, yeah, yeah, you know, why do you think J. Edgar Hoover called me? It was for me, you know? Right. Um, for I work for him. So do you like that reveal? Do we like that he's 
I do, agent. but why was why was Hoover like making a phone call? Like, what did he have to say right. to Wadsworth? Did shouldn't they had some kind of equipment that he could have like? Did it have to be the the main phone in the room that anybody could pick up? And anybody did. A co- and a cop answered it, and then and and Jagger Hoover revealed himself on the yeah. phone. It's like, hey, uh, Jagger Hoover. I know uh, we got this undercover thing happening, but could you go get uh, the guy pretending to be the butler? Thanks. And I don't even know who you are. You're not a part of this. Well, I mean, it could be our good, our favorite cop, Bill. Bill. Uh, he's like, hey, Bill, okay, don't say anything. It's Jay Edgar Hoover. I need you to play it cool. I need you to open the door. Don't yell. Don't yell. Don't say anything about murder. Keep it low. Just go to the door. Uh, the password is going to be uh, banana. Say that to Wadsworth, who's not really a butler. He's FBI. Don't make it obvious. Don't say it's me. And don't tell everybody that you're confused. Okay, I'm going to, I'll hold. You go do that. Okay, boss, I got it. I got it. Go, 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 go. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Murder. Why is Jager Hoover on your phone? What is Jager Hoover doing on your phone? Uh, and then Wadsworth is like, I'll, uh, I, and then Wadsworth has to pretend J. Edgar Hoover who and then he has to do his line like he's on everybody else's line why is he on mine excuse me and then he's got to like dismiss himself and I'm sure when Wadsworth picked up the phone he's like sweet Jesus what did you say to him and who is this cop and Jamie was like Ugh, I don't know Bill like, we're having trouble with Bill I know that you know that it's Peacock and everything but it's okay if something happens to Bill it's Bill like it might be fine if I don't reveal don't reveal who the murderer is until they take out Bill. It's right. just it's almost it's just it's probably for the best to let's take out Bill and then it's just part of the crime scene. They'll just add something up to Peacock's rap sheet, and then you know everybody goes home happy except for Bill. Bill, of course. Bill's um, out. do Bill's you bad till, Bill sucks to the end? Jeez. Yeah, and to me, like. Why is J. Edgar Hoover involved in like a with small <laughs> like murder extortion plot thing? Well, it does have Peacock senators. In it. It's it's yeah. much bigger, yeah. It's yeah, it's true. political and everything. So that he was always into the sense. politics. Yeah, and mm-hmm. also kind of things that were, um, you know, showboaty. Yeah, like yeah. he liked uh, showy cases. So that makes sense because this would be a, a big story, right? I mean, because I think famously he he made his name on the Lindbergh baby yeah. kidnapping, right? So if this is a senator's wife, it's a big story and big story, and then bringing down probably Senator Peacock, whatever his name is. Hmm. Like a lot of people are going down on this one. A lot of people. But then what happens after this, dude? Like, uh, all the scarlets and the plums and the greens and the whites, they just kind of go about their business? Like, what, what's the what, what's their life after this? It's a great... Do they, and do they, like, they have fruit or dessert, and then they get in their cars and just go home? They probably have to go to the police station and get interrogated. They have to talk about all this. They're probably going to... I think they're all going to do some time after this. Yeah. It's interesting, you know? Clue two. Clue, clues. 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 Um, I'm just Whatever wondering. What happened to that, our AI writer? She's, we haven't heard from her in a while. Uh, you know what? Why don't we ask her one quick thing? What was Let's her name? Let's ask her. Juniper? Uh, yeah. Juniper, yeah. Let's ask her at the end of Clue what happens to all the suspects. Okay. Let's, let's ask. Okay, we're connecting. Let's see. Hi, Juniper. How are you? Welcome back to Clue Movie Podcast. All right, let's see if she jumps. Hey, Brad, thanks for having me back on Clued Living Podcast. I'm doing great. How about you? What exciting topics do we have lined up for today? Oh, well, (laughs) hey, we have some great stuff. Jeff and I were just talking about the ending of Clue the movie in general. Um, And we're wondering, after uh, Mrs. Peacock is found to be the murderer in the B ending of Clue the movie, what happens to the rest of the uh, game piece characters, Miss Scarlet, Miss White, Mr. Green, Colonel Mustard, and Professor Plum. What do they do after the movie ends? Like, wh- where do they go? What happens? Tell us. 
see what she comes up with on that one. That's an interesting question. Thinking about the fate of the Game Piece characters after Mrs. Peacock's reveal is quite fun. For Miss Scarlet, I imagine she might try to use her charm and connections to maneuver her way out of any potential trouble, possibly leveraging some inside knowledge to her advantage. Miss White, with her dark past, might retreat into the shadows, trying to distance herself from the whole situation, perhaps relocating to a new place and starting afresh under a different identity. Mr. Green, given his secret as an undercover agent, could probably get back to his official duties, using the chaos of the night to his benefit in his professional investigations. Colonel Mustard might end up facing some scrutiny due to his military background, but I see him trying to maintain his composure and possibly using his tactical skills to navigate any fallout. Professor Plum, ever the intellectual, could find himself writing a book about the event, framing it as a fictional story to avoid any legal repercussions while still capitalizing on the intrigue of the night's event. What do you think? <laughs> kind of like it. You know, I kind of like some of those. Uh, I, I, what, so what would be the name of Professor Plum's book that he writes based on the night's events? Given Professor Plum's intellectual and historical inclinations, he might title his book something intriguing yet scholarly. How about Secrets of the Manor, An Evening of Deception and Intrigue? It captures the essence of the night's events and adds a touch of historical flair. Okay, that's yeah, all right. All right, thank you, Juniper. Yeah. All right, what did you, you think? I, I love all that. I think... <laughs> In 10 years, when we listen back to this podcast, this is going to be a very 2024 moment that we're like, let's play with AI. Because yeah. at, at that point, AI will have destroyed us all. Yeah. So, and we'll be imprisoned by it. So we'll be, like, we'll be listening back now and thinking, oh, it was so cute back then when Juniper was coming up with the fate of the Clue characters. And that was before Skynet yeah. became self-aware and took us all out. Yeah. I like it. I like... Uh, Mrs. White was probably my favorite one that she would just kind of disappear into the shadows and resume business as usual. Right. And Professor Plum, yeah, I like his book. I think he probably his the title could use some work, but but uh, I like that he would be the one that would like write it. And probably in his version, he's the hero, and he does shoot Mister Body. Yeah, absolutely. And would it be Cluedo? Would that be what he calls it? He would call it. Hmm. Who done it? The Professor Plum story. Or or what about this? What about this one? Who done it? What about this one? Plum out of luck. Yeah, uh, the plum. I thought she was gonna throw in a, a plum a, thing. A plum, pun. a plum pun. Yeah, something purpley. Yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, the blood, the color of blood was purple. Blood runs plum. Blood runs plum. <laughs> Oh man, that's pretty good. That, 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 yeah. Pretty good, but she's nice to bring in every so often. I like that was a good. That was a good call. Yeah, Juniper is one of our best guests. I would say uh, it's a tie with John Hatch and Laker Jim. Hold on, and then what well, we're gonna do? We're gonna do Juniper. one, one more Juniper thing. You have another idea? Okay, just one. I want to run something by her. No, just, it's fun. Just I would do, I, I'm glad I don't have Juniper access because I would do this all day. I'm gonna run something by her just real quick. That right. just came to my mind. Hey, Juniper, uh, welcome back to Clue the Movie Podcast. I have a follow up question for you. If you're a game for it, Let's see what she, see if she's. Game hey, Brad, for it. I'm always game for more questions. What's on your mind? Okay. You just told us what happens to the game piece characters after Clue the movie ends. In this fictitious continuation of the story, I like the idea of Mrs. White and Professor Plum running away together. And now they are a romantic couple. Because Mrs. White sees the success of Professor Plum's book, he is now a multimillionaire, and they are uh, retreating to California together. I want you to come up with a synopsis for the... Professor Plum, Mrs. White, romantic comedy crime caper. See what she does with that. You know what I mean? It's freestyle. Sure, that sounds like a fun twist. Hmm. Here's a synopsis for the romantic comedy crime caper featuring Professor Plum and Mrs. White. White lies and plum pies. After the <laughs> dramatic events of Body Manor, 
Professor Plum and Mrs. White find themselves inexplicably drawn to one another. When Plum's book, Secrets of the Manor, An Evening of Deception and Intrigue, becomes a bestseller, he and Mrs. White decide to leave their troubled past behind and start anew in sunny California. Settling into a luxurious seaside mansion, the pair quickly become the toast of the local elite. But life on the West Coast isn't all sun and roses. When a priceless artifact goes missing during a high society gala at their home, suspicion falls on the reformed couple. With their reputations on the line and a media frenzy brewing, Plum and White must use their wits and charm to uncover the real thief. As they navigate a web of deception and eccentric suspects, their bond grows stronger. White Lies and Plum Pies is a delightful romp filled with witty banter, laugh out loud moments, and unexpected twists proving that love can indeed blossom in the most unlikely of places. What do you think of this direction for their story? Oh, man. Come on now. White lies. I did laugh pies. out loud. She's right. She's right. It is, the, it is laugh out loud. <laughs> Jeff heard that name, and you almost, you almost yep. did a spit take. I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> I want to see that movie so bad. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Madeline Kahn and Christopher Lloyd? Yeah, in their seats in like Newport Beach. Yes, Newport. Uh, in their mansion. Yeah, like they'll be the toast of the town, and people like reference things like, you know, this is going to be a killer evening, and they kind of go, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen a, a a group of of party goers like this? Have you ever seen such a a group? <laughs> no, never. And then, but Wadsworth has to have like a cameo at some. Point. Oh yes, he's got to show up. He's got to be there. No, be that's like, the reveal. The reveal is yeah. it was Wadsworth who stole the artifact. Yeah. Oh, they all have to like cameo at some point. Yes, yes. Except for Yvette, obviously, and Mr. Body. Yeah. But it's Yvette's twin sister. Ah, always a fun, fun way to get somebody back in the movie. That's how you get them back. And I she really is fringe. And that's who Yvette was impersonating. Oh, she was impersonating her twin French sister. twin. Why she has a French twin sister that has an accent, but she really didn't. I don't know. But that's the 80s, baby. It's the 80s, man. Um, I like it. White lies and plum pies. I think we also White just, lies and plum pies. I think we also just figured out the title of this week's episode. Um, how could yep. it be anything but white <laughs> oh my lies gosh. and plum yeah. pies? No one's going to know what that means. And then, boom, Juniper is going to say it and then you go okay that's why they did that but i think that's I, it for I, I, minute 87. no where do you go from there you gotta AI leave on a us once again <laughs> all right well look for the general jeff smith on the boat brad gilmore next week we're gonna have minute 88 which we'll refer to affectionately as minute 87 because we had so can't much fun on this hear, minute. can't wait to hear what we talk about what Who is going to be the wacky conversation we have in the laugh out loud romp of a podcast and we're going to find out next week <laughs> on Clue the Movie Podcast ClueDoc.com TheBoatBradGilmore.com and we'll be back next week